Hey guys, Chef Brian Duffy here. Just want to let you know you're listening to Bring Your Torts Podcast with Jesse and Elaine. And God, I love these guys. Welcome to another episode of Bring Me Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. And this episode of Bring Me Your Torch is brought to you by Gifting Fun, your favorite gourmet snacks with a personalized twist. You can find them at giftingfun.com. There's free shipping through Christmas, so order now. Send a picture. Pick your box of snacks, and Jason and Cassie will mail it to you anywhere on the planet. That's giftingfun.com. On the phone are two of the stars of 90 Day Fiance Season 2, and we're hoping, if possible, to have them on every week to discuss the newest episodes of Season 3. Uh, Jason and Cassia, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having us. <laughs> Yay. So now that you've had a chance to see uh, what TLC actually put out there, how they edited the Where Are They Now special, what did you think of the show as a whole, and what did you think about your sections? We had uh, high hopes. Uh, you know, we were given the uh, the red carpet treatment this summer when they approached us. Uh, we worked out the negotiations. We thought we were on the same page. And then about a week ago, we found out that it was a 90-minute show for only four couples. So we were high-fiving each other. Nice. We were uh, slapping, uh, just uh, doing, doing, you know, break dancing. And um, and then all of a sudden, we, you know, got, four, you know, four days out, three days out, and there was no, uh, no remarks, uh, no tweets, uh, no messages on Facebook, nothing about this. Where are they now? No, no teasers on any of the networks. And we're thinking, boy, that's kind of strange not to promote uh, yeah. a show that had four million people at the tell-all. That's awfully strange not to milk the Muhammad mm -hmm. and Danielle. And yeah. uh, and then and then Saturday hit, and uh, the missus says, uh, "Honey, honey, come quick." And I thought, you know, oh great, she found something online that I that I <laughs> said two years ago about somebody. Um, <laughs> And I was rude to women or her or something, and she's going to chew my ass. But instead, it was uh, it was our, our two minute and forty five second uh, video about uh, the Mrs. Uh, Mrs. and I going to uh, Rick Matthews Buick GMC um, over here in Brooksville uh, as part of our business, our new business. And uh, we're like, oh wow, they they kind of put this together. It was real cute. Uh, this is this is great. We can't wait to see this tomorrow night. And a couple hours sunk in, right, hon? Yep. I took a shower, and I I get you know the the hot water hits me, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, there is a Canadian in the wood pile, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. What do I mean? Well, I came out of the shower, if you recall, honey, and I said. Honey, I think they're not going to put this in. I don't think they're going to put this in. And what did you say? Oh, they got to put it in. This is the reason. This is the reason why they even came to our house to film. Because they had ninety minutes, so they have time to put everything that they filmed. Yeah. So I said, honey, I'm going to make a gentleman's bet, which is pretty much a blizzard over there at the DQ, uh, which I own like four now. Yeah. I said I'm going to bet you a blizzard that they. Uh, they don't put it in, so I get one of my blizzards back. And uh, we watched the show, and it turned out it was about 12 minutes after 11 Eastern here. And my father and myself and and, and Miss Cassie here and the dogs were all on the couch. And we said, they're not putting this in. Yeah, the kiss was the last thing that you saw of us on TV. That's it, right? And then we came back with the other couple again to tell about the K-1 visa thing and the plans for the future. That's so, so weird. Uh, as you could say, uh, we're, we were disappointed uh, thoroughly. Uh, this, it was, uh, you ever have one of those days where, you know, uh, your dog got, your dog got out, it got ran over and then you <laughs> uh, came back hopefully home. Not. <laughs> it, you came back home and someone called you to tell you that your, your long lost grandmother died all on the same day. Oh, please, and then all of a sudden, somebody just sucker punched just for no reason. That's how I felt. Uh, I just don't like being lied to. That's all. But I do think there's a lot that they probably film that just they just couldn't put it in for one reason or another, right? You know, it's better than before. If you think we were portrayed better than before, yeah, in my opinion. 
That's the sense I'm well, getting. Well, you know, in all honesty, uh, yeah, that's that's fine and dandy. But uh, when you left the episode, you're thinking, well, wait a minute, what what exactly is he doing with this business? So what? Uh, that's what I was thinking, and I, I for the messages and the Twitter and the family and friends that were were ch- chiming in with me uh, were expecting us to have our Amy's baby moment, uh, our Amir's video moment, you know, yeah, um, yeah. and of course the Muhammad Danielle got their moment with all yeah. that craziness up there in Sandusky, but there was there was no moment with us. There was well, be careful almost, what you wish for, because I, I might argue that it would be better if Yamir didn't have his video moment. <laughs> so, um, you know, every, everybody had their thing, but there was no thing for us. And no I'm thinking, climax, well, wait a minute, yeah. this is the reason why I allowed them into my home. But but I will have so, to say, uh, though, but it was great that nobody else really got to plug anything other than, you know, the music video. But you guys got to actually plug and there was a good bit there of gifting fund, right? Yes, yes, it is. Um, but that wasn't Elaine. That wasn't part of the deal. That's all. And you know, I'm a man of my word, and a handshake is as good as gold. As to quote Jerry Maguire, it's as good as oak. <laughs> yeah. on the producer because the producer filmed a lot of stuff. They filmed for three days. So it's not his fault. Well, just goes to show you, it's, it's too late for season. Is, and and uh, I can't do anything about it except yeah. preach to the choir. It's over now. TLC's not doing any favors for us. Sharp Productions isn't doing any favors for us, and we're not going to do any favors for them. And we could uh, just uh, be done with each other, and that's fine. Yeah. And it's too late for the people on season three, but anybody who's thinking to go on for season four, just – Listen to this and, and maybe have second thoughts and don't actually do it. Yeah. Well, I, I don't feel sorry for season three too much. They had an opportunity to approach season one and two. And uh, I do I do know see a, a season three couple. I won't disclose them at this point. Um, and uh, from what I was told, um, you know, they, they all thought, uh, it, you know, the old saying is, it's not going to happen to me. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, just, just you wait. Just you wait, folks. Oh yes. Well, I mean, we kind of knew it was coming all along, just because the way how TLC generally handles things. But last night we saw that you guys had a pregnancy scare. We know that can't always trust what you see on reality television with production. But um, was this something you put on, or was it for the show, or were you honestly worried about it? I was uh, feeling a little sick lately. But I, I knew more that I was not pregnant than I was. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, when you feel, okay, I, I have all the symptoms, but I know I'm not. Maybe it's just because I'm not drinking enough water and I feel sick. Dehydrated, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, and a lot of people say, oh, my God, Kathy's so selfish. She doesn't want a baby. Oh, yeah. Yes, but I don't want a baby now. <laughs> you know <laughs> what? You know what? I, did, I saw those on there. I saw that on Twitter. The backlash that you yeah. got. I thought it was really unfair. Yeah, well, it is unfair. If I'm not ready to have a kid, and I said, yeah. oh, my God, yeah, I'll have a kid. Now I'll have to change my plans, and I'm fucked. Yeah, that's it. That's what uh, yep. I think. I totally agree. It's just not in the plans so, right now. Mm-hmm. So, oh, my God, we were chastised so we want because we want to have a planned pregnancy. <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> Love it. You know, uh, well, now where do where does that tell you about the viewer for this show, uh-huh. or or people in general in society? I totally you're being agree. criticized for being selfish because you do not want to have a child. And for the truth, kid, because I could lie. I am on TV. Okay, I will pretend I want a baby just because I know that people get at me. They'll come crazy. No, I I tell the truth as always. I always say what I think, and I get criticized for that. So yeah. be it. Yep. Well, I uh, on behalf of everybody, I apologize for that because, yeah, you do things first. You know, you get married, you know, you get established, and then you have the baby. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't always go that way, and sometimes <laughs> it works out just fine. But in a in a perfect <laughs> world, you know, uh, you, you, you have a plan and you like to stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, well, but no babies for now. Only cats. Oh, that's so sweet. No Another cat. big. 
part of that story, though, is you guys are trying to move to Tampa, which really surprised Jesse and I. Really? Yeah, because, <laughs> I mean, I know you wanted to move to a bigger city, but I also know that Jason is kind of, you know, comfortable where he is. Yeah, looks like it. Sometimes he complains about Spring Hill, so that's why I didn't understand why he didn't want to move. But I, I choose Tampa because the, uh, the University of South Florida is there. So it'd be oh. closer to me if I could just go to college, transfer my credits from Brazil. Because, you know, people say okay. that um, I'm just starting college here because I was not having an education in Brazil. That's why I came to America. No, I was doing, I was taking journalism classes down there. I took three years. I had to stop and come here. Now I'm yeah. transferring all my credits so I can finish. Oh, good. So are you going to yeah. be able to transfer all those? Yeah, I hope so. Oh, good. Three years. I hope they, they get, <laughs> At least, get some yeah. credit for that. Yeah. Where are you yeah, from in Brazil, if I can ask? I go to Cuba. I had a girlfriend from Hacife for a little while. Hacife? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Hacife? No, Ari. Hacife, sorry, sorry. Is what, yes, is what? yes. Oh, yeah. My, da my dad was from there. He was born, okay. born there. And now I learned how to say it correctly, so that's good. Maybe that's why she broke up with me. <laughs> Jason, did you want to talk about uh, what, what you were thinking oh, about yeah, going well, here's, to? Here's, the, here's what the conversation really went like when we talked about the move. We discussed how uh, between uh, December and May, eBay had done so well or had been doing so well, we actually had money to now start planning our uh, our exit plan for eBay because we knew that our bounty, you know, you can't sell from an empty cart, and we needed to fall back on something. That's how we uh, created the gifting fund using some of our connections here in town. Um, and uh, Cassie said, well, I know I'm getting my green card this summer, so I need to uh, think about my college. I said, honey, there's, a, there's plenty of money for that. Plus, once you get your green card, we'll get uh, some FAFSA. We'll fill that out and get, some, uh, get the Pell Grant and MAP Grant. So we'll play in college. We've got the business. We'll be exiting uh, eBay, uh, an opportunity with my hair, with my hair surgery um, opened up this summer. And that's how the conversation went with, uh, in the restaurant was we had money coming in because we've been doing yeah. pretty well. We then started a business, which was doing very well from the beginning. Mm -hmm. We now had money for a hair surgery. We now had money for her college. And now we have money to think about a move in six to nine months. And that's what was filmed. Mm -hmm. What you got was she wanted to move. I didn't want to move. And, and, I, and I'm selling – peanuts or I just sold two dollars worth of balloons and I still don't know what to do. <laughs> Cha -ching. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. But well, the, it, the, it's all, it's all the, you can expect the, from them at this point. The beginning, middle, and end of that conversation went was we had money, we're, we're, we're allocating the money, we're planning, and this is what's going on and this is how we're going to move. And they just left the end part of it. So um, it was it was disgusting to watch. You can never watch reality TV the same way, huh? And, and actually believe what you're seeing. Oh, I don't even watch. I don't even watch Lester Holt's evening news the same <laughs> way anymore. <laughs> I love Lester, by the way. He's from Chicago. <laughs> well, um, moving a little away from that for a second, did you have a chance to uh, listen to our interview with Danielle? And if so, what'd you think about it? I think you let her off the hook. I know. We were being nice. We had to. Yeah, you could have, you know, you know those way oh, the uh, the seals up there in Alaska. You could have clubbed her over the head when she popped her head out. Um, <laughs> but um, whack them all. But that you were like, oh, look a blue baby seal. And I'm like, oh, let's pet it. <laughs> um, so um, so anyway, um, you know, look, Danielle, I I talked to her actually. I just talked to her uh, a couple hours ago actually. <sighs> It's not my job to save the planet. You know, that's Al Gore's job. <laughs> and, you know, he invented the internet. <laughs> so 
I, I, I have talked to Danielle for, gosh darn, almost a year now. I have yep. told her what to do. I have told her what to say. I have done everything in my power in this greater Hernando County area to help the poor woman, to see the light, to take care of her family, take care of her. trying to help her, but she doesn't want to see the truth. Um, she needs an intervention in the most professional aspect. I think the woman is probably suicidal. Uh, we, I only want the best for her. I'm never going to make fun of her. Um, it is is something that it's something I don't know. I do not know what to do, and I feel helpless. And everybody is beating her up, and the production company and TLC especially, I think, um, are responsible to a, to a point. I call it the Jenny Jones responsibility. Someone shot the other guy because he had a secret crush on the other guy. He, mm -hmm. he shot the guy. Jenny Jones is in court. No more show. Yeah, you know, you, you put on what you think is good television, but it's really just smarmy at times, and you don't think about the consequences in the end. So if, God forbid, this woman who is alone does something that we do not want to happen, and you know what I'm talking about, I tend to think that they would have a case to sue anybody they wanted, and that wouldn't bring her back. So, no. I don't know. She's, she is a friend of the podcast. We wish nothing but the best for her. We don't, you know, we we yeah. want her to be happy, and that's all we can say. So that's that's my that's my take on it. But they have some issues that only two adults will have to take care of, and um, they have my number. If they want me to get them interviews, I yeah. will see if I want to do that anymore because it's now ten. 10 months now, 11, we're nine months out of the show. Everyone's door is closing. Our door is closing. We admit that. And that's why we wanted to fall back on a legitimate business uh, that is uh, profitable. And that's why we're, we're doing our mail order business, which, um, you know, we appreciate uh, you guys coming to us a couple of weeks ago and, um, and doing that. We, uh, we, we do appreciate you guys buying the shirts uh, seven, eight months ago. So, um, we appreciate that, and uh, we hope to do a, a good job. Like I said, we're not saving the world. You just yep. send us a picture or a logo. We decorate our box. We send a nice personalized card. We send it to a gift that, uh, you know, perhaps a guest that you have on. I know that you've done, uh, uh, was it Party Down Under? What's that show Party, called? Yeah, Party Down South actually filmed in, in Party Tampa Party Down South. You've you yep. had some other guests. If you ever wanted to send them a gift, obviously, you know, 20 25 bucks. We put your logo on it. We send it to them. You say, thanks. That's the way it is. I like that. And do you have? You said you had free shipping until December. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, we'll we'll eat the six bucks. You know, I got I got to deal with FedEx. Well, that's great. And and that's at www.giftingfund.com. Yep. And if you just want to hear what we have to say, check out jasonandcasia.com. That's Jason A N D Casia.com. Or just listen to our podcast because we're pimping it out here all the time. Don't worry. Well, we really appreciate you guys coming on today, uh, if only for a few minutes, just to talk about that, uh, uh, the newest episode of 90 Day Fiancé. And we hope, if possible, we can have you on either Mondays or Tuesdays or whenever we might be free after each episode of Season 3 and just kind of do a you know Monday morning quarterback and talk about what we just saw. Of course. It would be great. Uh, you know what? As long as we get it before the game. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, Kasi is a real big football fan here in America. Yes, I am. Ooh, nice. Is she a Buccaneers fan now or what? I really don't have a favorite. I just like to see them playing. I'm a San Francisco 49ers fan, so it's going to be a oh. long, long season because they are not very good this year. That's true. Um, <laughs> one thing that I don't understand about football, why do you have so many coaches? That's that's for someone with more information than me. <laughs> <laughs> and I definitely don't have it. Why so not just one for the whole team? I don't understand. I'm going to do some research and we'll talk about it <laughs> next week and maybe I'll have an yeah. answer. <laughs> now, are you ready? Are you ready for our last uh, anecdote about San Francisco 49ers? Oh, bring it on. Um, it was uh, last uh, December, I think. Uh, I listed some uh, football cards of Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> and you'll never believe who bought them. Ooh. Who bought them? Ooh. His mother. Really? Well, nowadays, I don't know if anybody would buy those. <laughs> yeah, even yeah he's, uh, I still got a stack, and I'm just probably going to give them to her just as a freebie, uh, oh. just because what the hell, eh? 
But uh, yeah. I emailed her and I said, are you who I think you are? And she said, yep, I'm his mother. And I said, so what, what are you doing? And she says, well, I have Colin sign the cards for all the letters of all the kids and make a wish foundations and stuff. Aww. I said, Hey, that's a really great idea. What are, you know, good for you. And, uh, and I said, of course, you know, Hey, we have a television show. And she said, I didn't watch it. I watched football instead. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, she's being honest. <laughs> well, that's good. You know, he may not be doing so great in football, but at least he seems like a pretty nice guy. Yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, at least I got the connection. If we ever uh, donated something to a humane society or something, I could just call her. That's saying that if he's worth, you know, 30 bucks, but right now it's, uh, you know, maybe two bits. Well, all right. We will leave it on that. And uh, I really appreciate you guys coming on. And we'll, we'll talk you. to you guys soon. Thanks a lot. All right, guys. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye. 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 And now on to some other shows. Homeland came back last night. And what did you think about the first episode of this season? Um, It's just the same old Homeland. I, I liked it. I mean, first of all, it needs more banging. Last year, we got a lot of Carrie banging the, the 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 little kid, not the little kid, but you know, the guy. Kid. <laughs> that sounded really bad. The you know, the Pakistani dude or whatever that got shot in the head. Spoiler alert. It was a little bit like Danielle Muhammad last season, and this season it's not right. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I, I actually liked it. I think the problem with Homeland is. That first season and the first couple episodes of the second season were so good, it'll probably never get back to that level of good. But I enjoyed this episode, and if it just stays good, I can be happy with good, I yeah. think. I mean, I kind of lose interest. I get on my phone midway through. It's just the same old homeland, and I was kind of more excited about watching you know, the season finale of The Fear of the Walking Dead. So. Oh, see, I was the exact opposite. I couldn't stay awake during that episode, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, this season seems to be... Going away from like the the big, I mean Brody's gone. There's no Brody yet. Who the hell knows? I'm sure they'll start talking about him <laughs> in the middle of the season again. Okay. But uh, he's just a little a little redhead kid of Brody's left behind. But they're really doing the riff from the headlines view, where it's kind of like an Snowden type deal, where documents have been leaked on the internet. Yeah, well, well. She do that or not? Immigration. Well, you know, she she did get kidnapped and put a bag over her head and threatened to be killed and lots of that's by the head of like is hezbollah in germany <laughs> yeah one of those one of those really guys realistic. we're not you know who knows <laughs> the carry saw relationship I mean, these guys just can't get along it seems like every season like they're friends and they're not friends and then they're friends again and they're not friends again and carry you know, i'm can't... disappointed in you <laughs> <laughs> he it's stupid and irresponsible <laughs> you know carrie's like nuts obviously but Saul, I think, was the one that betrayed her at the end of last season. We kind of just, you know, sold out, went back to the CIA after everything. So I think she's right. And whether he you – know, it's hard because Saul is played by Mandy Patinkin from my favorite movie of all time, The Princess Bride. But I think I've got to end Team Carrie this time that whether she tanked his directorship to the CIA or not, he didn't deserve to have it. Not if you turn your back on the ones you love. Right, but who's he? who's she working for now? Because it's not very clear, is it? Some foundation? It, yeah, it's like a nonprofit foundation. You know, I mean, she apparently has security clearance because he said, if I was still mad at you, we wouldn't have gotten security clearance. <laughs> but, you know, it. it's it's weird. I, she, she's, she's banging some new dude. You know, Adam, whatever, it's fine. You got Peter Quinn, who is, that guy's just dead inside. You know, he's got like a black heart at this point. He he tried to kind of get out, and it was kind of like Godfather 3, just when he thought he was out, they pulled him back in. I think he, now... I think he's amazing. I think he, I mean, in terms of, he kind of looks like Orlando Bloom, but like a you, better version what? of him. I don't see that at all. Well, who do you like better, uh, the guy from Fear the Walking Dead or, or Peter Quinn? Peter Quinn. Oh, my goodness. Do you think they're going to just drop the the Quinn loves Carrie plotline from last year. I kind of just felt tacked on. No, it was totally appropriate. I don't know. Everybody loves Carrie, even though she's insane. Yeah. Okay. She's got those crazy eyes. Well, at least they're not all stalking her on an airplane <laughs> in first class. Who's that from? Oh, me. Yes, I forgot. I, <laughs> stalking her. She could use a stalker back when I saw her. Oh, she really? was, she was, she was not doing so well career wise back then. This is and, after uh, Romeo and Juliet. It was many years after. I mean, Romeo and Juliet was like 96. I saw her circa like 2007 or what? 2006. She wasn't doing anything. She was sitting there. I'm like, oh, I remember her. She was in that thing once upon a time. <laughs> All right, on to your favorite show here, Fear the Walking Dead. Season finale. And I have to say that I liked this episode the most out of yeah, all of them. Yeah, zombies. <laughs> exactly. I go, what a surprise. All the zombies show up, and I kind of like it again. I still didn't love it, though. Although I think my favorite – can you guess my favorite part of the entire show? 
when he unleashes the zombies. My favorite part of the show is when the dude just like runs face first into the propeller of the helicopter. No one's gonna help me. Just like goodbye. You just see like red mist, pink mist. Goodbye. <laughs> but I'm actually on the team, uh, team Andy. That dude that they kidnapped and tortured. Like, dude, you, you, you trying to help him out, they kidnapped and tortured him, so no no wonder he's going to want to get revenge on everybody. Yeah, of course. And so I found a flaw in the show. Uh-oh. Conan. A flaw, a flaw in a show where zombies are coming to life? Oh, my God. Okay, so you know what the part where, what's the main character, the new Rick? What's his name? Yeah, I I don't know, yes. But by the way, this shows why I don't like this show. I don't I don't feel any connection to these guys. I don't know their names. Well, there's only, it's, what, six it's, episodes. But so let's just say Rick number two, right? Okay. So, remember when he beats the guy to death? Does he beat him to death or he just beats the crap? Oh, he beat him to death. I don't know. Okay, so. So, what he happened? had his, his knuckles were obviously really bloody. And I'm sure they would have cut at some point. So, at the end of the show, when he shot his ex-wife and he went down to the beach and was having, you know, his moment in the sun, you could see his hands and they were completely, like, fine like it looked like there was lotion put on it. like they were i'm sure you put some bastard tracing on it It was some bandages a couple hours later it's good as new no no <laughs> i mean there was nothing on his hands his hands looked so nice you would never know you just beat somebody to death a couple hours earlier and yeah by the way he uh spoiler alert they killed uh, his ex-wife because she was scratched and uh i don't know. i didn't know that you could do it for scratched apparently it's everything nowadays and i I was kind of not paying attention, which is bad for something we're talking about in the podcast. But so did the the guy that he abducted and tortured, did he end up killing the other guy's daughter that he had a thing with? Or Can we pause really quick? Could you why? Hello? Couldn't just finish that thought. Hey, um, I'm on the podcast with Jesse. What's up? No, um, I think she definitely survived it. She was kind of limping and holding her arm, but when I saw the bullets fly, it looked like it, they hit her chest and there were multiple bullets, but I think she's going to probably survive. This is why I just can't say that I like this show. I mean, I don't dislike it. There are a lot of worse things on there, but if this was the regular Walking Dead, I would have known exactly what was going on, but my interest was kind of just fleeting, and I was telling myself... You got to pay attention because you got to talk about this tomorrow. And then, and then I'd find myself a second later <laughs> looking at my phone and then like, wait, what just happened? Did I just miss something? So it's – and you know they're not going to go on this boat. It's too easy just to go on that I know. Boat. It would. God. It is. Blew. It really is. Here's my main problem with it. And I've seen a lot of people online since yesterday have the same problem. What did you think the show was going to be about when they first announced it? Um, L.A. going under with because of zombies? Isn't that what happened? Well, well, no, it was supposed to be like the – like how it all happened, how it began. In this episode, it goes – I mean in this season, it goes from like a couple of zombies popping up here and there to suddenly there's just like a mass of zombies. Everybody's dead and, and it just it, – I want to see it breaking down. I, it was just – it went from zero to 60 too quickly. I think you're right. And, I, and it followed and them Rather than spending time bit, with a yeah. stupid family. Yeah. A stupid blended family. Who cares about the drama? I don't. I think that you, – you hit the nail on the head with that. It's all about that family. And you gotta live or die with that family. And if you like them, great. If you, no pun intended. That but family. Like them, great. But I just, I just don't. Wah, wah. It's a bunch of whiners. Those little brats go to some person's house and just destroy all their crap a couple episodes ago. For all you know, they're coming back. You just destroyed their house. You fools. <laughs> so where do you think it goes next season? Are, is there gonna be a next season? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure the ratings are good on it. It'll be back. I don't know. Probably them trying to get out to that damn boat and then realizing, hey, this isn't going to work out and probably trying to go east, which is a you bad know, idea. To go out to the boat and then – you want to go to Japan? <laughs> That's not a good idea. They're going to go out to the boat and then like some human – like you know, some somebody on the beach is like, no, save me, and then destroy the boat. Like it's always yeah. some, some, you know, sh dip shit. <laughs> I can <laughs> say just, that. Just, just really destroying it all. Like, yeah. That's why they are the walking. You know, the zombies are the walking dead. They're the walking. Well, dead. I'm excited about it. Well, we'll see. I'm I'm more excited for the regular Walking Dead to come back. Well, that this was time. so predictable. You know, Rick's never gonna die because the show wouldn't go on. You know, that certain characters. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Know. Well, who, who, who do you think is safe on that? I won't. I won't. I know who's gonna die. Like most likely, I won't uh, comment. I have no idea. I'm not gonna make any. You just said it's predictable, and you have no idea? No, I just, every time I'm not, like, scared anymore because I know Rick will handle it, you know? Whereas the Fear the Walking Dead, I was like, oh, my gosh, she's going to die. Everything's just going to crap, and I kind of put myself in that. 
position of just being uncertain. Whereas if I was with Rick, everything would be fine. I was kind of just hoping they would all die. Just just kill them all off, start again fresh next year. Oh, well. (laughs) Um, So the Amazing Race was on the last two weeks, and we figured we'd start talking about it a little bit at least. Have you watched The Amazing Race other than just this season? Nope. So, so you're a you're an amazing race virgin. Yeah, how many seasons have been on? Yeah, you know, too many to count. Oh, a really? Lot. You know, oh, it's it's been on for quite a long time. I didn't realize. I it just was started that watching popular. it. Like, I well, I come back to it and leave it, and come back to it and leave to it, leave to it, leave it, because you know, it does get a little old after a while. But when it's good, it's good. Um, and is this season good? I, I like it so far. I started watching it really because I like Team TMZ because you know I watch TMZ. Every every day, yeah. like a psychopath, yeah. and of course they were the first team to have to go home. Uh, Siobhan, not the blonde, the other one on that on TMZ, she seems like pretty much the worst person in the world. So I think if you look on like Internet Movie Database on the message boards, it was pretty much a clear uh, consensus that everybody was happy that they were going home. All right, well, a little too snarky did, for everybody else. Did TMZ finally address it on the show? I didn't see it. I thought for sure that Monday morning they would be like, oh, but I didn't see it. Maybe I somehow missed it. You know, uh, every once in a while the DVR doesn't doesn't catch it, but I really wish they had. The people I don't like on the show right now, I don't like the super fan couple. I'm actually not a fan of the two bros the, either. The super, but, you mean the green team? Yeah. You know, the, the guy did a whole wedding proposal. It's based on the show. You know, he went all over the country and all over the world. And But they seem like they're bad winners you know like they, i will have to by. say i don't think she is i think he is well, yes yeah that's why i don't even have a thought on her he I don't, embar- in my mind he embarrassed me every moment i watched him i just started cringing more and more because of the He's stuff that was baby. the stuff that was coming out of his mouth when she was doing the tango on the wall and he was like yeah baby yeah i don't know if production did that so that it would make him look worse but it really made me feel uncomfortable that he was like even interrupting that. Well, even when the bros were uh, in the first episode, in the first scene, basically, where their little thing kind of broke down, and he passed by, and he's like, oh, I'll see you at the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> when you win, you don't have to like rub it in people's faces. It's a bad winner. Yeah. And it should for next episode that these guys are going to are gonna clash again, too. And good, I don't like either of them, but I would take the bros over these guys. I mean, yeah, I, th- I like the bros. I think they're both. Uh... They're both uh, lookers. I mean, th- remember, this is the show that I became a fan of, Natalie and Nadia, who went on to... Uh, went yeah. On, they went from their season on to, sl- on to I don't know, it's not Celebrity, it's All-Star. Yeah. No, before that, we went to All-Star Big Brother, and they were the first kicked out, and then they went to Survivor. Really? Natalie won, yeah. So they, they're three reality shows in. Hold on, they went to All-Star Big Brother? Yeah, no, I'm sorry, did I say Big Brother? Yeah. I meant All-Star Amazing Race. Oh, okay. <laughs> and how, what, what place did they get the first time around on Amazing Race? I want to say they were like fourth. Like they 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 made it pretty far. Okay, they would have had to. Um, they were on you know all stars. Yeah, but it always sucks being the first person out. You know that's just, that just blows. But whatever, so it has to be somebody. Um, and then I guess the last show we'll talk about today is Are You the One? Have you had a chance to watch any of that? Yes, I think people. I'm you, still a little bit confused about the whole thing. What what are you confused about? So they all have to, even if they have feelings for other people, they all have to find somebody who the doctors or whoever they are say that are their perfect matches. Yeah. Do so they have like, to be you, like banging start... them in, in a relationship or do they just have to find each other and say, you just have to like find each other and say you are, but here's the problem. I mean, it, to me, it shouldn't be a problem. So if you find someone you're banging and then it turns out you're not their match, then there's another girl out there who, or another guy out there who maybe you're match and then they want to have a relationship. So sometimes they're like, I'm sorry, we have to stop banging because we have to find a perfect <laughs> that match. You love this show so much. Well, there was one guy who had a he had like a fit every week, and to be honest, I don't blame him because like you know they had like His a relationship. His always have fits. <laughs> well, well, he was banging her, and they liked each other, and they ended up together, even though they didn't, they weren't the match. You know, they at the end they figured it all out, and then they were banging each other after that. But I can only imagine the bodily fluids that go through that house because. People are just banging people left and right. And, oh, you're not my match. Oh, wait. Oh, oh maybe you are. And then I'll start banging you. That it's, was Magic it's, Mike. It's Magic Mike? What? The guy, Mike. Oh, that guy. The, the guy who does the. Yeah. Oh, he's a cancer. 
I don't know. I, you know, not that I'm any master of knowing what uh, male strippers do, but the guy didn't impress me when I saw him. He, so he picked up a girl who weighed like 50 pounds. Big, big whoop. You didn't think you were <laughs> hating on this guy so bad. I kind of enjoyed the lap dance. I, I didn't really remember who he was until you just brought it up, actually. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those shows that it's going to take me a few episodes to figure out who everybody is. Because I kind of just Does anyone ever get booted are. off? Yeah, well, if, if you go to the truth booth and you're right, you get to go to like live in a villa with this chick and probably just bang her all all time till the show's over. Oh, really? Yeah. So the the goal is if if they go to the truth booth and they are a connection, that's two people out. So then the odds of you finding your match become better because there's less people to choose from. Couldn't this whole thing just keep going on forever? What well, only goes for ten weeks? So at the end of ten weeks, if you haven't figured it out, then you get no money. So, surprise, surprise, the first two seasons, it's week 10 where they end up getting the money and figuring it out. Oh, well, that's production, obviously. And this this year's different, though, because they got zero matches right last week, so they lost $250,000. So, if that happens three more times, is the show just over? Because I mean, if that happens yeah. five times, do you owe them $250,000? Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. I like that. So, it's literally every single time... Yeah, but what after a while you get go into the truth booth, but you're a match. Well, then at the end though, you, all you have to do is make sure everybody who's still in the main house is matched up at the final episode, uh, or or any. I mean, theoretically, they could have all gotten it right the first date, and then the show is over. But you know, it's not going to happen. So they all found their matches last season. The last two seasons, yeah. Okay, so maybe they're all not idiots. I feel like they and last season the people though, the twin the twist was last season that. One guy had two matches. <laughs> what? So, yeah, so they like, totally screw everything up and they still figure it out. So, I don't know. That's interesting. Hmm. But the reason why I, I like the show, but the reason why I have to watch it, as we've said before, is that this is one of the new feeder systems into the challenge. So, some of these folks you may see on the next, not this coming challenge, but the challenge after that. And cause the, I can totally but, see why they always pick these people because they're crazy. Yeah, the only problem is, though, that the old challenge people don't look at these people like they are deserving to be there because they're yeah. newbies, I guess you could say. Well, they don't even have but, Real World anymore, do they? Well, you know, it came out, I think, a week or two ago. There was news that it sounds like the Real World is coming back to Las Vegas for a third time. Oh, wow. There were reports that they're going to get ready to film at a Gold Spike Hotel, which I've never even heard of before. Gold Spike? Know. Yeah. Like yeah. Hotel off the hotel off the strip. Oh, you know, it'd be the next big thing, I guess. But if that's true, because I don't think it's officially been, you know, picked back up again. I think. I don't think it has either. That was the whole, the so, whole shebang. So whatevs. All right, that's enough for now. <laughs> we'll come back later this week with our uh, 90 Day Fiance preview episode for. Uh, it's gonna for be big. Three. We're gonna give our thoughts on who we're gonna make fun of the most and who we're gonna become friends with by the end of the season. Who's gonna hate us? And who's gonna <laughs> come on next year when TLC finally lifts the. Uh, Gag order. <laughs> and obviously, you want that the young and the old, you know, the old young chick and the old guy. Oh, together. that guy will probably come on. <laughs> he seems like a little feisty one. Woo! All right. Until next time, just remember uh, you can find us at www.bringmeyourtorch.com. Where else can you find us? Facebook.com slash bring me your torch or Twitter.com slash bring me your torque without the H. No H! You can find us on iTunes, Blueberry, Stitcher, YouTube. As we said in the past, just Google "bring me your torch" and not "not bring me your touch," which I, I said love last that. time. Bring me your torch, and uh, you can find us. You'll find everything you need to know. So remember, you may have come here as a stranger, but you are leaving as a friend. We'll see you next time on "Bring Me Your Torch." Bye.